disclaimer regarding recording the device applies and I see the same three before recording the meeting. First item on the agenda is the public approval of public meeting minutes of December 2nd, 2014. I have a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Next is the total expenditures for the month of $705,630.22, which is made up of the December 13,000. $359.11, current bills totaling $332,870.77, and sewer bills totaling $159,400. Motion to make those expenditures. I make that motion, Mr. Chairman. We have a second. All in favor, please say goodbye by saying aye. I see our lieutenant here from the Pennsylvania State Police. So you're here to the report tonight.
and we had a discussion, uh, and I'm confused by the response I got. I, I'd like to go back over it again if I may. My concern was about speeding and passing on double no lines on Smith Bridge Road, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. US 202, and the point where you go down the field of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And the representative from your office said that, uh, well, the first of the chairman responded that they were going to be putting up a sign that flashed on when they're going more than 35. But then the person from your office said that it is permissible in Pennsylvania to pass on a double, double yellow. And I, I'm confused. Now, this Smith Bridge Road is a two lane road uh, with a double yellow down the, the entire distance of it, I believe. And it uh, certainly is the area where I live. I'd have to examine it. I was at a meeting uh, in the fall with Senator Pelleggi and some residents that live along Smith Bridge Road. Okay. Uh, we have conducted some enforcement efforts along that road. Yeah, but this we have had set, some success. We've talked about some signage that could be improved. Uh, the double yellow line, I'll research that for you. I don't know who made that comment. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be glad to disclose it out here. I'll talk about it. <coughs> yeah, maybe it's I offline. Have, we can give you some information I'd like to hand you too. That's fine. I'm confused by it. Okay. Sure. I think others here were. were and sure. maybe they were too. I mean, normally the double yellow line means no passing. <coughs> I'll second your confusion. When I was studying for the test with my daughter Carrie, I looked that up. I agree with you. <laughs> I thought it was the. I think she was going to start the study, so I hope he gets it wrong. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. I, we got the same misinformation from Trooper LeWire a couple of years ago. Um, somebody tried to pass a school bus. Or actually, excuse me, in this instance, they did pass a school bus at Schoolhouse Lane. And it's, it's a single yellow, double yellow, same difference, solid yellow. And Trooper McGuire informed us that that is against the law. I'll have to research it. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to speak to it verbatim, but I'd have to research it. I'd have to see what she was referencing. Yeah, I, I had an incident about a month ago on Schoolhouse where somebody, I was out jogging on the left side of the road, and somebody passed and got pretty close to hitting me. Probably at least 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, and they had them just blowing through this four way stop. Did you call them? What's that? Did you call them? I asked the uh, prison guard that recognized the vehicle to report it. I don't know if he did. The car he got passed was a prison guard and said he knew who it was. I'd have, to, I'd have to check with the prison guard. I'd encourage anybody, if you're having trouble with traffic issues within your community, please call us. If you're relying on somebody else to call, you're probably not going to get a result. Probably not. I thought I could trust the prison guard. Probably not going to be from the prison guards either. I mean, yeah, I had no information. I mean, I barely saw it as it came flying by me because I was drawing. We've done, done enforcement on there. We've done the stop sign details. Okay, well, there is a problem there. Do I need to do anything more official? I will take care of it. <coughs> I had a question. Okay. Well, one more. Only one? Okay. Yeah, please. For the trooper? Yes. Yeah, one more. We got an email from the Concord Township officials about two months ago about problems with school bus stops in the Garnet Valley School District. I asked the school district, and they weren't aware of the problems. Were there? No. We sent. Just the Public Safety Advisory Committee sent out. It's just a general brochure, informational brochure. Oh, it said there, there was problems. And I, I don't recall that, but. Go I'll look it up on my cell phone while we're okay. waiting. What is the actual law for car moving if a, kid, a child's alighting or getting off a school bus? Are the vehicles allowed to move before the child is in a safe location? How is it they can have to stop at 10 feet of the bus. The law doesn't say anything about not moving until the child's. No, nope. they have to stop within 10 feet of the bus. So if the bus is 100 feet up the road with its yellow arm out and its flashing red stop sign out, and that car wants to slowly drift at 10 miles an hour until it gets within 10 feet of the bus. I think I disagree with you. I'll get you a okay. copy of the law. Thank you. All right, moving right along, we'll go into public safety. Thank you. <coughs> public safety awareness committee for the South Region. Yes, and Lieutenant, you may find this interesting. Um, so, in the beginning of the year, we started a Twitter and Facebook page. And uh, last month, we averaged around 701 people looking at our Facebook page and liking them, but uh, when we posted um, the Pennsylvania State Police alert about suspects that were portraying the Verizon um, 
employees and taking people's delivery packages. We had over 18,544 uh, likes. So we're realizing, you know, as it's interesting information, it certainly goes far. So thank you for that. Thank you. Set up the web page for not for the interview. Sort of part of John Gillespie. I have two reports for tonight. The uh, monthly activity report from December from uh, Chris Mariani, Director of Public Works. Both the main plan and the air plan continue to meet discharge requirements within the parameters of the NPDES permit. And the operations staff performed eight lateral inspections as required for resale certification. <coughs> the uh, second report is actually an annual report from uh, Terry Grant from the Sewer Department. The sewer Department had 25 new connections to the public sanitary sewer system during the year 2014, which brings the total residential customers to 2,374. We have a total of 104 commercial customers, five new ones this year, connected to the system for a total customer base of 2,478 accounts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Activities for December. At the planning questions public meeting held on December 15, 2014, the project managers for Spring Valley Lot 3 uh, Hotel, uh, the Hall property, and Whitford Properties LLC have all been granted a, a 90 day extension to April 22, 2015. And Brandywine East LP has been granted an extension through July 22, 2015. The Commission also reviewed the conditional use application for Wegmans liquor license transfer and have forwarded its comments to the Board of Supervisors. <coughs> and we also voted unanimously to recommend the final minor Subdivision approval uh, that of Garden Valley School District on uh, Station Road uh, to the supervisors at their uh, January 5 tonight public meeting. Schedule for the month has the agenda meeting on uh, January 12. Public meeting next is on January 20th, and the caucus will follow on January 27th. Now, I apologize, I was too good over here. Code enforcement. I'm going to tell you, officer. Mr. Chairman, the Commission Board. In December, the Department issued 93 permits, building permits, out of 75 roofs for new roofs. The day we issued since June, 456 roofing permits. Uh, we issued also 15 plumbing permits, 16 mechanical permits. 18 electrical permits, one standalone zoning permit, 11 residential resales, three commercial resales, six signed permits, and 124 certificates of occupancy. That's what I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Solicitor, Mr. Dunham. Yes, so uh, let the board be advised that uh, on the 31st day of December, uh, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania denied the petition to intervene in the of the Concord Township Government Study Commission. Other than that, sorry, Bill. Uh, Mr. Tunyard, I think the IMS litigation is scheduled for January and February. That's correct. As previously indicated, that is uh, scheduled to begin uh, a week from Monday. Thank you. A week from Monday, from the day? Yes, sir. Township Engineer, none of the associates can apply. Uh, just a few things this evening. First, uh, we received correspondence from PennDOT. I know everybody's been interested about the condition of Mill Road. Uh, PennDOT's indicated they will be repairing that uh, this summer as part of their road program. That's always sub subject to change, but uh, that's good to see. Second, uh, Township had requested at the intersection of Concord and Smith Bridge Road, we make some modifications. And we sent the PennDOT before the holiday. Uh, the paperwork to change the signal timings there to update those to reflect the current traffic conditions, as well as uh, add the signage for no turn on red for southbound <coughs> Concord Roads approach. Uh, so, I will likely approve that and then we'll implement that to the public works. 
Um, last, we've received a few complaints uh, regarding the intersection of Baltimore Pike and Thornton Road, right outside the township building here. Um, we pulled together a quick memo to the township suggesting that we pull together a, a brief study uh, to submit to PennDOT to review. Uh, it is the intersection of two state roads, so anything that we were to do there, whether it be signage or any other modifications to the would be PennDOT's call. Um, but I thought maybe I'd bring that up tonight to the board to see if that was something they wanted us to pursue further. Do you need a motion for that uh, expenditure? I think that would be appropriate. Uh, we're looking at approximately $2,000 to complete that small study. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make that motion. That was brought to my attention by several residents. I wholeheartedly agree that you know, it's very dangerous going across here. And you know, the thought of maybe having a, a right out both ways might make it a lot more safer. So thank you for that. Yeah, let's get the study through. Let's keep the study on and uh, see what we have to see. Do so have a motion? Do you have a second? I'll second. All in favor, please say the five percent. Aye. 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 You're okay to go ahead with that. Anything else, Dave? That's all. Township Manager, Brenda Lamont. I have no report tonight, but I want to thank the board for my appointment. I look forward to working with the board and also the public for another year. Thank, thank you. you. Um, before we get to public form, public comment, I want to just jump ahead. Under old business, I need a motion to accept the resignation of Robert J. Willard, effective December 31st of uh, 14. I think Bob was here, uh, what, 12 years? Uh, and uh, moved on to another position. So, I have a motion and second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, public forum, public comment with this. Okay, uh, let me just ask, would you like to explain the, the situation? After hearing uh, the complaints about the double yellow line, the double yellow line is a driving regulation. To take enforcement action on a no passing zone, it has to be posted, and that's what the confusion line. Uh, Double yellow line, yes. So we're both right. Double <laughs> cracker, <laughs> cracker, you can't pass here. For us to write you a ticket for improper passing, it has to be posted. It's not to say you couldn't be cracked. It's not even for counts, right? I would have realized that. I was always taught. It is. It's no pass. Don't, don't pass. But as far as enforcement is concerned, it, it has to be posted. So from your end, in order to write the ticket, it has to be posted. No passing, but they can always be cited for careless if you can make the case for, you know, Smith Ridge Road. With the bumps and the hills and the curves. So that I remember. But the police officer actually has to see it. Yeah. Yeah. You can read a report something, sir. I think we're just talking in generalities right now. We, the times have made that a double double line you can't pass, but you can't pass as far as we are, but you can't take it unless it's just no pass. Correct. I'm understanding which, correct. which could cause the township to want to put uh, no passing signs in the areas you're having problems with. Yeah, you know, or, I think we ought to probably uh, ask Chris to take a look at that. Uh, yeah, that actually it might even be PennDOT's responsibility, not the township's. I have to double check. Yeah, well, if you're talking to PennDOT about those couple other issues, maybe you mention that to them. Because I'm assuming most of the double yellow line roads are on the state roads anyway. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, we'll look into that. But I, we cleared that up a little bit. Good. Go ahead, Chris. I think it's organized. Okay, easy question to begin with. Uh, Five items listed here. I'm ready for my name from uh, 22 Leopard Road. <coughs> uh, now that Brenda has been promoted to township manager, is there a plan to replace the assistant manager? I think the position of the board is we're going to, uh, Brenda's going to be our township manager. We're going to see how it works out in the next few months and actually define that assistant manager's role a little better. Okay. So you're not, you're not, it's not, it's not immediate. Not immediate. Uh, the same yeah, agree. Agree. Okay. Second question I have, several months ago we talked about the historical resources inventory, which was being used by an applicant to try to tie into the whole property development and saying initially that uh, the class one resources and things like that. Well, I, I noticed and I believe the board did that there was Inaccuracies on it and had not been updated in a few years. You told me at that time it was being assigned. I uh, met with Penny Scott, who's the chair of the historic uh, commission. And in fact, I think as recently as last month, I was at their meeting reminding them of their charge to complete that. And she's, they're working hard on it, hopefully by early, early this year we should have it done. But they haven't been working on it since that time. Okay. 
but we ask them to do yes. based on his legal advice. Yet you're doing something on someone's behalf, not his behalf. Well, you're if I could also add here, the township acted because it believes the, believe the Supreme Court should be aware of the existence and purpose of the township commission government uh, study commission, and the board was aware that after the election was certified and the elected members were in panel, the commission the government would be able to ratify, amend, or withdraw any petition and or brief on that behalf. As far as I'm concerned, as one of the five supervisors who to authorize this, I think that answers the question, and I think this is this is all moved now in light of the Supreme Court saying so we're not even going to read this. It just seems like it's not that well, and we, we disagree, and my opinion is, and I think my colleagues agree, he acted on behalf of what the Board of Supervisors asked him to do. The Government Study Commission, as it says so clearly in this letter, was addressed to Mr. Jim Gray, Chairman, dated December 12th, that they would be able to ratify, amend, or withdraw any petition or any brief file on its behalf. They elected to do nothing at their last meeting, which is totally their prerogative. But since that time, the Supreme Court has rendered the point moot anyway. So Mr. Cunningham has been appointed solicitor, and I think we're through with that, and that's all there is to it. Is there anything to call him? No. It is unethical. I'm sorry if you agree. Any, any other questions regarding this? Yes, your name, your name, your name. Jeannie Marino. And where do you live? Adrian Hayden and I do believe that Mr. Donahue should be brought up against disciplinary action. That's something somebody else to bring up against us. Excuse me.
that I think you acknowledge that you, that Mr. Donahue uh, coordinated with Mr. Sheridan the filing of an amicus brief on behalf of seven residents of Concord Township without their knowledge and consent, and you are all stating that there is nothing unethical about that. But if I may, Mr. Donahue, if I may. An ordinance was passed, I believe, in July or August by this board, placing the questions on the ballot. With all due respect, 64% or 65% of the voters in the township voted affirmatively on the question to form a government study commission, a Congress Township Government Study Commission. And if they're doing so, excuse me, well, ma'am. If you just let me answer and give me that courtesy, I'd appreciate it. Okay, and then, the I I'm, I'm, and I'm trying to do that, I'm trying to explain it to you. And then after that, those same voters voted for the seven people that they desired to be on the Government Study Commission. Now, with all due respect to the folks that serve on the Government Study Commission, and I believe one of them is here, the question still stands, or the, or the point still stands, that the voters voted for a Government Study Commission. In my opinion, as the solicitor for this township, and as I informed the board, I felt I would be remiss if the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania was not informed of the vote on the Government Study Commission, and furthermore, how their, their decision may or may, impact, may not impact that commission's deliberations. Now, you keep suggesting that a brief was filed, and you're correct, a brief was filed. However, and more importantly, a petition to intervene was filed. And it's up to the Supreme Court to decide whether they're going to entertain that from the petition or not. And that's their prerogative. It's Ryan, as simple as that. You very artfully evaded the question. But the issue at hand is that you filed an amicus, or you were involved in the filing of an amicus brief, which articulated the opinions of seven study commission members without their knowledge or consent. There's absolutely no, no way I can understand your justification for that, or do I think the majority of reasonable people could. And I just respectfully disagree, and if, and if you read the petition and, and the information that was filed, it fully explains it. Thank we did, you. We did read it, and we believe it's in violation. Okay, anything else? Yes, there was one. One more? Go ahead. I hope you will, or I'll clarify since you didn't, that the petition was filed by the supervisor <coughs> under the guise that it was being filed by the study commission members and it was being filed in an effort to intervene with some of your residents, almost a thousand residents, uh, request to have a, a question put on the ballot. So the petition that was denied was the petition that the supervisor filed not the petition to the thousand residents filed. We're still waiting to hear the Supreme Court's ruling on that. So it was your petition that was denied, just so we're clear, clear on that. So basically, in essence, you, you did something that I think many of us would agree is at best unethical, and you really did it for no reason at all, because the Supreme Court said they really didn't care what you had to say on that. Okay. Ma'am, ma you're entitled to your opinion. I just disagree. Thank you. Any other comments on this? He gets almost $50,000 a year back then. They should provide you with his fee structure, and they refused to give it to me three years ago when I asked after the reorder. Or I should say refused. They told me they were going to give it to me, and then never did. You want to, I'm sorry, we have no recollection of that, but if you want to file a raise to know on that, we will let the let's public I, Why can't you just get a copy of the resolution? And what else do you have to say? Doesn't matter. We're, 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 we're happy, really comfortable with the fees. What is the fee? It doesn't matter. You're saying it doesn't matter what the kind of fees are? We have to say so. Explain that. Explain that. Yeah, being, being a professional for many years in the, the engineering profession, it's the value of service that you give to a client. 
Okay? Fees, fees are important, but one solicitor can take an hour and a half to do something that another solicitor can do in 45 minutes. You cannot look at dollars for power. If your residents are not comfortable with the conduct of the solicitor, does that have any bearing whatsoever on your... Uh, the board, the board makes the appointment, not the resident. The board makes the appointment. You, you, folks, you folks elect us, and we make the decisions. Apparently, we made some mistakes. Thank you. Uh, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Arthur German, 212 Kirk Road. Um, we are adjacent neighbors to the BYC. And I'm sure we're all BYC supporters in this room, some mm -hmm. more than others. And I uh, just want to let the board know, and a lot of you do already know, for the last year and a half, reported by a BYC board member, um, they were going to phase in some capital improvements. And, you know, the electric was October 13. I understand now there is a lighting, a reloading project on the board. Um, I don't know how far along that is, but as adjacent neighbors, and we've been good neighbors. Yeah. And, you know, it's all good over there, but doing work without permits and not letting the neighbors know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. There, it's got to stop. Yes, no, I agree. I mean, the, the letters went in, and the board president and I agreed to disagree. The four houses got hit with a surge, and I've been there 13 years, and never had that happen. So, mm -hmm. coincidental, maybe, uh, but suspicions. There are less. The, uh, from what I can understand, I see Mr. Padgett, the uh, Green Wine Youth Club president, I think, Paul, right there. Yeah. And, uh, they are considering a more energy efficient lighting system for the field. Uh, there was a preliminary plan that we suggest that they send that to our lighting consultant. All along, being, if they do decide to do this, there would have to be a meeting with the residents and probably even here before the zoning board if they're changing the lights. Uh, we thought it would be prudent for them maybe to have it looked at before they go and just go into the meeting. Uh, I think they are trading information as we speak, but there are no concrete plans uh, to put lights in, but they have been talking about it. You are absolutely right. And, and that's reasonable, but we as neighbors, yep. and I've talked to many neighbors, feel the burden of proof needs to be placed on BYC. I agree. For the need, I mean... Paul, did you want to add anything to this part here? Uh, I, yeah, uh, I did expect this to come up, but um, my name is Paul Paz, and I'm not on the board. I was on the board. Right. Almost a decade, but I'm a designated representative for this I'll call it project. Um, it, it's all in the talking and thinking and planning stages. I met with one of your neighbors before Christmas, and I hope to meet with you. And I've actually met with you on the site out there. I look differently than I do. Well, I, do. I do. I do. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, nothing's happening. We're just talking. We're thinking. We're trying to figure out what the future of the youth club is. There's six thousand kids in this community. Looks like. Yeah. No, 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 it's, yeah, it's a very valid point. Yeah, well, we I mean, need to meet with you guys. They Kevin call it a project, and uh, some of don't even have lights. Yeah, Kevin's at the BYC. Those lights are supposed to go out at 10 o'clock. Your name is actually on the list, sir. My name is Kevin McDonough. I'm the liaison at working with Brain Wine Youth Club for the Board of Supervisors. And Paul Padgett and I speak weekly and have uh, spoke a lot over the last month or so. Uh, your name was brought up along with also Mr. Barbado, who I believe is an engineer. And we made sure that nothing was done to put up any new lights. We are, uh, BYC is doing a study, and we are working with them to see if, if there's more advanced lighting systems that actually can have less light pollution, where, whereas any of the light that might shine on properties adjacent to the Kirk Road fields, that could be lessened because there's newer technology since, you know, a couple decades ago. And and that, that, that's also understood. I, I can't understand how a baseball field, it stays light till 930. So now you're going to be playing two games or tournaments and at 10 o'clock, <coughs> deadline has to be. Yeah, well, so we, I, we always... I I, I must say, I have to help. You know, Paul Pageant is, is, he works tirelessly for BYC, a total volunteer. Uh, one, 
example last year was there was trash. You can imagine there's hundreds, even thousands of kids and families that are there, especially you know the, uh, the warmer months, maybe not through the winter, but the other months of the year, there could be trash that's blowing on your property, Mr. Barbados' property. So Paul and I met out there. They spent significant Brandywine Youth Club dollars to get a new dumpster with a, a fence to make sure that you know they were adhering to the, the uh, neighbors' concerns. And I promise you, we will be listening to your concerns, Mr. Barbados' concerns, any other neighbors. We will be including well, you in the process. Maybe we ought to, Kevin, maybe you want to set a little meeting there to go over. It sounds like right now the lights that are there, the, the off time is of concern. Well, and take a step back here. Part before the horse, they know what they're doing, and stormwater management issue. Okay. I want to see that addressed prior to the lighting issue. Now that might not happen, but and John, you're probably familiar with a lot of water issues from way back. But you know, that used to be a level. You know, they used to land planes on that field you know, back in the day. So, you know, Kevin, maybe you want to set up a meeting. We ought to get over there. Well, it's like, yeah, I'm wrong. Did you get your number to Ms. Lamont? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'll meet you. Meet you, you, you with you any day, any time, as long as well, I'm sure. He's been more than reasonable, but I have to say that. Mr. Chairman, um, getting back to the amicus brief uh, question, uh, why wasn't the brief filed on behalf of Concord Township instead of a commission that did not exist at that point? You, it, 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 it could have been. Uh, you know, it's Mr. Mr. Sheridan's call. So Mr. Sheridan made that call to to file it on I mean, behalf I, of I a guess, government study that didn't exist. Could have been filed on behalf of Concord Township or filed by Concord Township on behalf of. Oh, Mr. Sheridan. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. <coughs> I actually gave Cleary 72 to Schoolhouse Lane, and I was able to pull up a copy of the school bus law. Okay. Um, and what the officer was saying, and he actually was incorrect, it says, in the law, in no event shall, a shall, a shall the driver of a vehicle resume motion of the vehicle until school children who may have alighted from the school bus have reached a place of safety. It doesn't only say in okay. about the lights. The law actually obligates the driver, and rightfully so, but little kids at school bus stops, you shouldn't be moving. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. And if I could add, if you think it's bad, Mr. Donahue doing things that apply to our child's life was actually endangered, really threatened at our school bus stop almost six years ago now. My wife and I reported the police, the township. They had a private meeting, they claim. Mr. Donahue claims to have had a private meeting at our house with the state police. I can speak as a president. Is it a question for us? It's public comment. Can make a yeah, statement. but not. You can answer. No, we don't need to answer. Why didn't we get a chance to bring up this part of the law with the state police and Mr. Donahue? I think Mr. Uh, the, the trooper is here. I guess if you want to talk about part of the law. With Actually, I, I asked multiple times, and he promised me Mr. Donahue billed about eight hundred dollars for all this events he did on our behalf, which we never got to see or a party of. And you promised me you were going to give me that documentation. Can I get it now? I'm Brenda, can we dig that up and we'll get that to Mr. Cleary, please? Okay. Thank you. Okay, it's about the third time you've promised that. I, I don't remember promising it to you before awesome. today, but that's okay. We will get it to the letter. Do you have anything else different? On the yes, sir. Let me leave this with you. On okay. Schoolhouse Lane, there continues to be a problem with commercial businesses operating out of 139 Schoolhouse Lane. Dave, we went through this too. No, I'm asking what? a question. Dave. Every time I ask it. Okay, you can ask it. I'm going to give you the same answer I'm giving you last year. Okay. okay. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania appellate court ruled against the Capellis and said they had to follow the zoning laws just like everybody else. 
And the reason you have these zoning laws for residential neighborhoods is because that property is zoned according to the courts and according to the township, R2D, which is residential. And if you want to run commercial business out there, you got to go through zoning. Also, about six years ago, one of Mr. Capelli's employees who had a previous hey, record of burglaries, hey, I have some right to speak to with this. I mean, yeah, it's public comment. His employee was found to have robbed at least 12 houses, about half of them in Concord and Bethel, that's what they knew about. When the seven police officers came out to the property just up the street from my house on Schoolhouse Lane, where the Capellis continued to operate illegally commercial businesses, two police officers were almost run over by this person. He was charged with six different felony accounts for assaulting a police officer, oddly, those charges were never processed through in the Delaware County Court System. Neither the state police nor the district attorney actually wanted the Capelli employee pushed for trying to run over two police officers. So Chark, he was never... Mr. Clary, did he serve 84 months in prison? Was he found guilty of assaulting a police officer? I don't know what he was guilty of. I was not sure. I wasn't stationary. The guy did seven years. And how long should he be put in jail and try to run over a police officer? What's that? How long do you think somebody should be in jail for jail? I don't know. I'm not a judge. Dave. Is it felony? Dave. He did seven years. Dave, this is the wrong venue for this. No, it's not. All right, what else you got? I think I'm requesting that you enforce the zoning laws for Dave, the ruling Dave, against the Capelli. Dave, Dave, we've been through this. And why aren't you going to enforce it? Because if you read the court decision, the court decision I says the township has the right, had the right in the court decision to remedy the zoning defect. And we amended the zoning ordinance, similar to what they did in Edgemont and other towns, that built uh, business uh, or, or occupancies of class one historic resources that have been in existence since before 1965 or something, were That's grandfathered true. in as a use, Dave. We've been through this now for six years. Dave. So you're saying six the, years, the Dave. business? Six years. No, answer me. I just handed you a business that's moved in in the last two years. The business, the, the, the special exception or the grandfather runs with the ground, Dave. Zoning runs with the real estate. Well, then you change the zoning and you come through the zoning board, you know, yeah, back door yeah, and you call it some historic thing. Dave, 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 you're wrong. No, I'm sorry, not. you're wrong. Well, what does your lawyer say? We pay a bunch of money for him. How come he's never put that on paper then? So Why hasn't he taken a state appellate court ruling and put his professional opinion on paper and said this ruling doesn't have to be enforced? Dave, six years ago. Mr. Cleary, to, to, answer, to answer your question, Mr. Cleary, that has all been done. You know it. I know no, it. No, I haven't seen it. Excuse me, Dave. It's, it's in right six years, Dave. No, you wouldn't, put, you wouldn't sign up to it. You wouldn't okay. sign up to it. Anything else you have, Dave, other than this? That's it? So, Dave, I gave you our answer. The zoning, Dave, in your mind, doesn't anything apply else? even though the court said. Anything else? Thank you. Any other comment? Ma'am, I see you have your hand up one more time back there. Yes. My name's Ann Miller. I'm on Shavertown Road. And I, Seven years. I really want to just express a lot of concern because I have publicly recognized you all. Thank you for your service. I know that you have been elected by a majority of the voters in this township. And you all serve and you do a lot of work on behalf of the group. And I've acknowledged that. But I have to tell you that you have to remember in the democratic process, from the time the election's are over, you all are elected to represent 100% of us. And so you have come with a very strong representation of a loud voice, but you've got a lot of people here who are asking to be heard and for you to act like you care. And it's really important that you do that because you represent all of us. We all own property and homes, our futures, our children, the schools, and you all are the ones who are elected to represent us and all of our interests. And I just, does anybody remind you of that very often? Because I'm day. not sure that Every I feel day. that I've really Every been day. listened to and cared about. Every day. Every day. Every day. Thank you. Chris Donnelly, Five Ruby Road. Happy New Year. Yep. Uh, Mr. Pledge, you pointed out, you acknowledged the uh, abundance of pain in the law. Yes, correct. Thank you for acknowledging that. <clears throat> As you have a month before, when I brought it up. And Lieutenant Trooper acknowledged that if 
for signs were to be posted with no solicitation, that would not be the job of the state troopers, troopers to enforce, as it would be in township. Well, which I understand what they'll start doing the things as they can very good at. I guess my question slash suggestion would be, could you or would you consider posting no solic solicitation, excuse me, signs at those known places? Because it may help the entire you see an example of that's a good point. When you cross the bridge, it'll be okay. slow down. Yeah. You know. I think uh, we'll talk with our code officer and our solicitor to get some advice on that. But maybe at these problem intersections, you, you target them and perhaps even get Chad Sports to cooperate. I see those guys in front of you. Where in, uh, I see anyone else. I took a picture of you at Smith Bridge, and uh, that's a bad spot. Thank you. 
year award, the two year contract, the main core and technical company. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, number nine, John, you have that one too, I think? Uh, yes. Uh, Township had received this on November 26th for the Community Center and Interior Renovations. And it's taken a little while for the architect to get back and give us a recommendation, but we do have a recommendation for center point contracting yeah, for items number one, two, and three. These are option packages for uh, soffit repair, truss repairs, and exterior stairs and walls. And that would be an amount of $155,500. And I believe this is all been funded by the Community Development Program, CBDG money. Yes. Right. So I make that in the form of a motion. What so were the other bid, bidders? The other bidders? FW Outer Inc., LJ KOL Construction Inc., and Columbus Construction. So the next scope, next high, next bidder for the same scope was 180000 was 30, 20% more. But a month ago you said that you were concerned. Well, we did, and that's why the architect did the research and this guy is good to go. So it was one that was low yeah, bid? Yeah, low bid. That's why we didn't do it last month, Rufus, because we wanted to do a little more homework on the successful uh, bidder, and we are very comfortable. The architect reported back to us that he is able to perform the project, so it worked out for him. I have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Next is uh, the LMJ plan, which is. Um, the LMJ plan, which is the uh, on Baltimore Pike across the old Paul stations, uh, they were asking for a one year extension to file their final plan. We have a motion to approve that extension. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. John, do you have escrow releases? We have two escrow releases. First one is Brandywine Mills, Wilmington, Westchester Pike, escrow release number five, which was the Whiteman's project. This release is in the amount of $678,708.71 and it's for site preparation, demolition, soil erosion, setting control, earthwork, storm drainage, water, site improvements, landscaping, and applied bank boulevard. Uh, after this release, there will be a balance of $1,574,243. And the second Second one is uh, the Concord Spring Valley Brandolini escrow release number 10. He's going to be an apartment and townhouse project behind the town center. This release is for $45,106 and it's for curbing, sub base, and paving. After this release, there will be $1,344,000. $324 remaining. But make that in the form of a motion for both of these releases. Motion, do we have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Except as complete for filing, Steve, it looks like we're going to have a little bit busier of spring. Uh, the filing two plans Team Toyota Run Mills, 1050 Baltimore Pike, proposed dealership expansion of 14,914 square feet of building. And also Valley Point Church, 209 Bethel Road, an 8,429 square foot building addition. So we have a motion to accept those plans as complete for file. A motion. We have a second. Second. All favor, please signify by saying aye. Motion to adjourn. So we second. All favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you for coming out this evening.